All right, hey, what's up, guys? I'm at my buddy Sam's house. Say hi, Sam. Hi. Uh, yeah, so we just delivered his uh, liquor cabinet here. Is that what it's called, liquor cabinet? Yes. Okay, cool. So install went great. He has a truck, which is nice. I don't have a truck, so anyway, uh, it all worked out really nice. His floor is nice and level, so these roll just like they're supposed to, and uh, I think it looks really good. Check out a montage of some footage. This is what we're making now. It's gonna be a farmhouse desk. Except that's gonna be like brown because stain and stuff. Got this dowling jig off of Amazon. We'll see if it works. Jenny won't let me get a festival domino. So we have to do this until. If we make a lot of money on these, I could buy a domino, right? Right? just amazed so we've been kind of struggling the last couple of weeks I don't know just like mental funk you know what's going on here um, just a lot of stupid excuses a lot of like blaming the community and like I don't know we, we kind of live in a temporary town like nobody who is here is here for the long long term if they are then they're like super native and they're just very fixed mindset like just I want things to be old-fashioned the way that they were and I don't ever want things to change but we were kind of using that as an excuse of like why we weren't selling as many projects why we weren't booking clients for big builds we just realized hey it's all our fault it's nothing to do with the community it has nothing to do with who's here for how long it, it all has to do with us and how we suck as marketers and we suck as salespeople so I don't know just moving forward we're gonna start really pushing into sales and getting that to work because we've kind of like exhausted all of our friends and family that live in the area. So we're really going to start moving towards doing stuff for the public, making some money that way. So everything is your fault. Everything is your fault. It's time for a popsicle break because it's hot outside. This whole like it's our fault thing I, I've noticed that just about everybody deals with this at some point you wake up one morning and you realize like hey I'm gonna start taking this personally 
I'm not gonna blame the people around me. I'm not gonna blame my circumstances. I, I've gotta just decide, hey, I'm either gonna figure this out and make it work, or I'm just gonna sit back and complain about it. And I think that that's a really key like principle to life is just understanding that like, look, yeah, you can sit back and complain about your circumstances or try to find a better set of circumstances around you, but that's not really solving the problem. The problem is your mindset. The problem is you, me. It's, I, that's it, plain and simple. The people that win in sales, the people that win in marketing, the people that win in this world are the ones that look at a difficult situation and say, okay, no, it's on me to perform. It may be a difficult situation. It, the odds may be stacked against you. It may not be fair, but those people that are willing to step into that arena anyway and say, no, I'm gonna make it personal and win are the ones that come out on top in life. Because if you wanna succeed in woodworking, and I mean really succeed, like make it your living, make enough money on the side to buy a new truck, whatever your goals may be, if you really wanna make that money, if you really wanna become a better craftsman in general, you're gonna to have to start taking things personally. You're gonna to have to learn some lessons the hard way and just power through it. It's not gonna be easy. If it was easy, people wouldn't pay people to build furniture or to build anything. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, that was our number one mistake was we were blaming others instead of taking it personally to fix ourselves. Check that out. No, there's too much glare. There you go. So this is the farmhouse desk. This is gonna be our next production project. I'm gonna finish up. The base here is gonna be white. And then uh, we're gonna put this up for sale and run Instagram and Facebook ads in town. Try to sell some of these locally, do pre-orders, just like we did last time. Cause these are like stupid easy to make and our profit margin is bigger on these than um, what the modern desk was because we don't have to spend 50 bucks on the hairpin legs. We can just build. This whole thing is like four and a half two by fours. So what's that, like 12 bucks? Yeah. This finish that won't dry fast enough? My fault. A messy workbench? My fault. This still isn't done? My fault. I don't have the dust collector hooked up to anything because I didn't buy the right parts. Again, my fault. I don't know what type of wood this is. Somebody very kindly gave us this blank of wood. I still have no idea what kind of wood it is. Guess whose fault it is? Jenny's. Everything is my fault. Not in like a bad way, like obviously my self-esteem is not going to get hurt. Me of all people, my self-esteem isn't going to get hurt. But like just taking everything so seriously like that, it, it really does a lot to broaden your perspective. It's like when you start taking everything personally, it's a lot easier to accept it and to make time to figure it all out. What's up guys? Hey, that's our new production piece. It's a farmhouse desk. I'm actually kind of excited about it. Let me show you. So the top isn't attached yet. That's why it looks a little crooked, but check this out. Finally got it painted. Got the nice top on there. This top is even smoother than my buddy Sam's cabinet. Uh, this is just the piece we're gonna take pictures of. In the final product, we won't have these little pocket holes here. Um, there's a couple drips in the paint too, but um, the main thing right now is just to get a production piece that looks good for pictures. So the idea with these production pieces is that something that we can just bang out really quickly and make a prototype of, which is exactly what this is. This is not intended to be a like super duper nice quality final version. This is what we use to kind of get the measurements down, get the plans written, um, go through the workflow and just say, okay, if we were making 10 of these or 20 of these, what would we need to do differently? Would we need to buy anything else? Would we need to get more pipe clamps? Would we need to get, I don't know, just change our workflow? Do we need to change the plans even? Because sometimes you need to change the plans if there's something that's gonna be too time consuming and it's a process that goes to each every single table. So um, that's kind of our thought process there. But um, yeah, so we'll take pictures of this one today. Um, yeah, ooh. I got the dust collector, at least the uh, the first version of all the piping and stuff is uh, ready to go. So let me show you that. All right, so again, this is very rough. This is my first time doing it, so don't judge too hard. But anyway, I've got a nice loopy swoopy bend right here. This is the flex hose. So it comes out the back. Um, 
I know that's not the right angles and stuff for the proper airflow, but when it gets turned on, that accordion shrinks a little bit and it turns into a nice, even sweeping turn. Uh, it's about an eight inch diameter, which I've been told is what you should do. It should be double, the radius of the turn should be double the diameter of your pipe. So like you can see here on this four inch curve, even though that's a 90 degree corner, it's taken about an eight inch radius. Um, for the four inch pipe. So go look that up, nerd out, but uh, that's what we're doing. I've got all the blast gates installed there. Um, I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to attach these, uh, some of these couplers of the four inch PVC to the PVC and then to the hose because the hose is much smaller uh, even than the PVC. It won't fit around the PVC and it won't fit inside the PVC. So uh, that was a little bit of a trick. Um, we had to get these couplers here, I'll show you. Uh, right now, this is the only one I have. I got it on, on Amazon. Uh, they're little couplers. They go inside the PVC and then inside the, the flex hose. And then you tighten it down with band clamps, uh, or in that case, on the PVC it's duct tape, and then on the hose it's uh, one of those uh, pipe clamps. Or, um, what are those called? Hose clamps, that's it. Um, yeah, I know this This is not the final setup for the miter saw. This is just what I had right now. I'm in the process of trying to build a big box over the top of it, but uh, I'm really just lazy. I don't really want to cut big ports in the bottom of this, and there's some clearance issues, and I can't get a jigsaw back there. Otherwise, I'll take the saw off, and then everything's out of alignment. Don't feel like doing that, so we'll try this out. If it gets to be too much of a pain this, this winter, then uh, I may just bite the bullet, unscrew this, and then do it the right way. But yeah, check it out. I got a floor sweep now. So I can just sweep up after I'm assembling the screws or whatever, push all the dust into there and sweep it up. And I don't have to use a thousand plastic garbage bags and kill the earth even more. Um, this hose also goes to the planer. So I measured it out to where when I flip the planer up, it's also got a four inch port on it. So it's good to go. I can finally use dust collection in the planer. I haven't in the past. In the past, we've just made giant piles of shavings here on the floor. Um, it's just a really, really bad way to do it, but uh, I'm excited to get dust collection on that now. And then the sander, of course. I don't really use the sander that often, but when I do, I'll be happy to hook it up to the dust collector now, especially in the winter time. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It's free and it helps me out a ton. So if you don't mind doing your good deed for the day, hit that like button, share this video with your friends. If you know anybody that you think might be interested in getting into woodworking, starting to make money with woodworking, it would help us out a ton again. And you get to share, you'd have something to talk about with your friends, right? So um, if you don't mind doing that, that would be great. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking in and uh, we'll see you soon.